guys, thank you all for tuning in to the Sweat Equity Podcast. This is Law Smith. I'm recording this on my own at 9.15 the Monday night before we release this episode because I dicked up. I fucked up. I lost our intro. Caleb and I recorded after having a great uh, conversation with Break Content's Zach Yeager from Tampa, now lives in Brooklyn, and we had a great intro going, million laughs. I was like Maybach Diamonds if you go back an episode before this. So I apologize. You're going to have to hear my mumbly voice for the next couple of minutes. If you like our podcast, remember, just flick out the link or blog post or iTunes or however you listen to this, Podbay, I think Stitcher. You can listen on Libsyn.com, which is the host. All that stuff's in the cloud, but it gets out to you. It's kind of cool. We don't have a... Huge audience, but the people that do listen, the 500 or so, or 500 to 1,000, really enjoy it, and I love getting the feedback. So make sure to hit us up in the comments on Facebook, on iTunes. If you want to rate, review, subscribe, that's that cheat code that helps us get up. If you're wondering why all those other podcasts are up there, and you're like, hey, man, why isn't this is good? Why isn't this up there? Uh, that that's the that's the code. I don't think it's right, and I need to talk to my homie, uh, an Auburn alumni, Tim Cook, CEO of Apple, and just kind of go, hey, man, what's up? So anyway, I, I wanted to make sure we get an intro and kind of bring you into the world of Zach Yeager and do a formal apology for Caleb, who uh, not only hooked up Zach to get on this podcast, but was able to uh, get him to, uh, let's say, let's put it this way. We tried to do a Google Hangout with this so we could have a little video action. That didn't work. And basically, I, I know it from the other side where I don't have a lot of patience running a business where you're like, all my time matters. Um, Zach was very patient. About 45 minutes later, we just had to do it through Skype and record it on some new app and had to figure it out on the fly. But that's why he's, he's good people, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Hey, Zach, it's Caleb with my good buddy Law with Sweat Equity. How you doing? Doing well. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for making some time. We know you're busy, uh, busy up there in, uh, in New York City, and thanks for coming on with us. Yeah, of course. Excited. So basically what we like to do with the show, and uh, I know you, you told us a little bit uh, when we were chatting uh, beforehand, um, you know, you've listened to a couple episodes, but we really just you know, have seen a lot of the work you've done. We've seen um, a lot of the work that Break Content has done and kind of what you've um, brought into fruition uh, with Break Content. Um, but we kind of just want to hear a little bit about your story and, uh, and how you got started in, with what you're doing. Um, and really, any, any advice to people out there that you've learned along the way of kind of building your own business? Yeah, so I, I started Break Content about two Two years ago now, um, I myself come from an advertising background here in New York. I moved up here right after school and started working for Ogilvy and Mather and McGarry Bowen, two big ad agencies here in the city. Um, and when working at those agencies, I worked on a number of big brands like uh, Marriott and Chevron, and we were responsible for creating all of their advertising. And I really started to see that the entire ad industry was changing really, really quickly, and I, I saw a major opportunity um, coming about. Uh, basically, all of these big brands are having more and more needs for compelling content, um, but the big established production companies are having a really hard time doing that and, and making high-quality video without the big budgets and the long lead times that they've always been accustomed to. And I realized that if I could figure out a way to give brands a way to create really great content quickly and cost efficiently, that we could really start making a difference in the entire industry as a whole. And so um, around the same time, I myself was getting really into filmmaking and video production. And I started to meet some really talented filmmakers all over the place. And I realized that all over the world, there are these 
really, really talented content creators that aren't working full time anywhere. They're freelancers and they are hungry and talented and it's just a matter of finding these people. And so I, I thought about it and I realized that if I could build a network of these people and give brands a way to create content with local filmmakers on the ground around the world that we could really bring budgets down and we could start doing things a lot quicker. Um, you know, when I was working at the big ad agencies, one of the main things that really blew my mind is how much money it took to get things done. You know, to make a simple video for Facebook, you know, was costing two hundred and fifty, three hundred thousand dollars, and in my mind, I'm like trying to figure out how that's even possible. And you know, a big part of it is, you know, let's say a brand like Coca Cola wants to shoot some, wants to shoot a commercial in Beijing or in India. Just the travel costs to send a crew over to Beijing or India for you know a number of days. That's going to be you know tens of thousands of dollars right there. And you know if we could just tap into really talented filmmakers in Beijing or India without having to send a crew over there, um, you know, that brings budgets way, way down. And so uh, we've been doing some really cool work with some really, uh, really innovative brands like Intel and FedEx, um, and it's, it's been going really well. We just opened another office in Denver about six months ago, and um, our network has continued continued to grow. We we last month signed on our 400th content creator in more than 120 countries around wow. the world. So, yeah, that's our that's our big pitch now to to brands and to agencies is that we can help them create really awesome video content quickly and cost efficiently anywhere in the world uh, by tapping into our network of local content creators so the way i see it um and we've talked about this on other episodes and uh we talked before we got on <laughs> we're on skype so if anybody's listening and wondering why it's kind of a little jagged uh between our conversation that's why and it took about thank you for having the patience for us uh fucking this up for about 45 minutes before we started but uh <laughs> But like uh, my thing, the way I kind of was while I was listening about um, y'all's business kind of strategy is we've been talking about disintermediation a lot. And that's basically that's the boring way of saying the Uber for this and the Uber for that. You're essentially finding you found that thing where you go, hey, this is a huge cost. There's a lot of uh, red tape um, and there's a lot of just time wasted, which essentially is cost accounting problems. And so you go, hey, I can, I, I see this as an opportunity. Now, here's the, here's the part where I kind of go, God, this sounds super ambitious, and this sounds, um, it sounds, it sounds like for me, it's, uh, I do the same thing with freelancers, but I do it uh, for all freelancers. I, I just see a nightmare of like trying to organize and find the best, and when you have a big company, you know, it, they, they want it their way. And so how do you how do you dictate that? I guess let's start there here. How do you find good content creators? Are you plucking them from Instagram and Snapchat or YouTube or whatever? Or are you putting it out there, you know, in Upwork or something like that? So uh, there's a number of ways um, that, you know, we go about it in the beginning. Um, I had a number of contacts from my ad agency days that, uh, were some really talented filmmakers in in a, multiple cities around the world, and I started it kind of small, and then really I started going city by city and using websites like Behance and just searching through Vimeo and looking for videographers that have a really really unique style and a really um, a really good look, uh, but that aren't going to be so uh, established that they're going to be crazy expensive. It's this sweet spot of guys that are you know they're they're experienced enough to have really great work on their on their you know profile on their portfolios uh, but you know they aren't yet you know charging twenty thousand dollars a day to work with them so it's really just was literally going country by country and having skype calls with these people reaching out telling them i'm starting this network um, and just having the conversations, and you'd be surprised. I mean, there's so many people around the world that are really, 
really talented, but they just don't have the the way to get to the big brands. And so I'm trying to merge the two where, you know, I'm now having relationships with these big brands that need the content. And, and now I'm able to put them on projects with content creators that are, you know, content creators from Ghana, Africa, that in a million years wouldn't be able to do a, you know, video shoot for Coca-Cola. But now, now they're able to because um, our company is giving Coca Cola access to this this local local network. So you're you're up at sorry I mean you're up at uh, all hours doing Skype calls. I'm guessing you're in Brooklyn right now, um, and uh, you know someone in, in Beijing or someone in Ghana. You're gonna have to are you are you having these weird kind of hours where you're at least in the beginning mm-hmm. when you're trying to procure all these uh content creators are you are you just like fuck it man i'll just i'll get up at three in the morning and talk to this guy and then you know or gal and uh whatever it takes kind of thing yeah i mean for sure so the first almost year of the business was me completely dedicated to building this network um you know it was a lot of late nights a lot of you know 3 a.m skype calls but you know it I, I knew that it, it, as soon as I got the network done, and, and my goal was to get um, filmmakers in 100 countries. And so once I reached having filmmakers in 100 countries, that's when I kind of shifted my focus from continuing to build the network and now going more after the projects. Um, but you know, we still are adding talented content creators weekly. Um, you know, we've got a, a sign-up page on our website where... Um, you know, content creators can send us their info to, you know, apply to join the network now. But yeah, uh, in the beginning, it was, um, it was definitely a lot of late nights, but um, now I've, I've got more of a team to help me with it. So it's not as bad anymore. Zach, it, it sounds like you guys solve a lot of different problems with some of these, uh, some of your clients who come to you. And um, like you had mentioned before, like, man, we, you know, we need a video crew in Ghana because we want to do this commercial or we need to do, um, you know, some sort of product promotion, um, and need a video for it. Um, but you guys solve the logistical nightmare, um, that also leads to a financial nightmare. And then you guys provide the quality content. And it, it seems like, you know, this is a, it's, it, when you hear it, an idea, it sounds awesome, but to execute something like that, you know, can you talk a little bit about, I know you mentioned, you know, you, you went out and once you got to est- having established um, uh, talent in 100 countries that you went out after some of the projects, what was it like going after those projects? Did you guys find any, you know, some of your failures that maybe companies said, yeah, we're not going to go with you guys. Maybe we want somebody who is, you know, it's more in-house. We don't mind sending people out and paying for this or, or, or those sort of things. Or as soon as people hear you guys, are they just like, yeah, we can save money on this. Like, let's let's go that route. And we, we've we seen your portfolio, so we know we're going to get the quality of work that, that we're expecting. Uh, talk about some of your failures and then maybe how those conversations go with some of your, your potential clients. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, in the beginning, the focus was definitely, you know, building the network. But then once we had the network built... Um, you know, in order to, to get projects from any of the big brands, you have to have a respectable portfolio. And so, um, you know, going straight into it with, with really no work to show in the beginning, it really was, you know, just a numbers game for every 50 phone calls I had, I was able to get one person interested and it was really just a matter of, um, you know, hustling and, and, and making it happen. You know, now we've gone ahead and, and uh, built out a sales team. And so that's what most of our Denver office now is our, our sales guys who are basically reaching out to ad agencies and, and brands directly um, to try and find interesting, cool video projects. But, um, you know, with any startup, with any business, there's going to be um, many failures in the early days. And, um, you know, for us, it, it wasn't so much failures like we weren't, um, you know, doing a good job because I, I really do stand by all of the projects that we've done to date. Right. Um, but it, it, it was more just 
um, you know, when I'm calling up Coca-Cola or when I'm calling up, you know, JetBlue and trying to get them to take me seriously until you have some work on your portfolio um, that is worthy of them taking you seriously, it, it's hard to do. And so um, in the beginning, it really is just um, about, you know, relationships, trying to find people that will kind of take a chance on you, um, you know, trying to find people that, um, you know, like what you're doing, like the vision of your company and are willing to give you that first project. And, you know, once we got our, our, our first big project, um, which our, our first project was actually for TIA, a CREF, the financial services company, mm-hmm. um, basically, and, and that was actually a photography project um, where basically they wanted to sh- show how global they are as a brand and how they're helping small businesses all around the world. And so over the course of a month, we sent out local photographers in 30 different cities around the world to sit down with real TIAA customers. And so for something like that, um, you know, for, for TIAA to send out photographers in 30 different cities, you know, you can imagine how expensive that would be. You know, that would take years to do, you know, that would take, um, you know, if they needed to send one crew to 30 different cities, um, you know, just the travel costs alone would be astronomical. But with our network, we're able to pull the trigger on some like that really quickly, send out the local filmmakers, you know, in a much shorter amount of time and, and get it done. And so once we got that first project out of the way, then, um, you know, it, it's kind of a snowball effect. And, you know, what, what we're selling and what we are, you know, calling up brands, trying to get them to listen to us. Um, you know, it, it is, um, it, it, it is, it's not hard to get phone calls because right right now everybody's trying to figure out how to create engaging high quality content, um, more cost efficiently and, and quicker. And so when we're calling them, telling them we have a solution for that, um, we can usually get, you know, 10 minutes of someone's time. Yeah. You at least get to kind of give them your, give them what you guys are about and see if there's, there's a direction they want to go with you. Yeah. Um, you know, what is it like? Uh, I think the hiring process for, for any company, and even when you're bringing on, um, you know, creative talent, it can be pretty scary because you've got to hope you did enough due diligence to to know that that person's work is going to be up to your standard when called upon um and i know you know with law here at toka works that's something that um can be nerve-wracking at times as well that (laughs) that that things are things are going to go kind of according to your standard it's the trojan horse uh (laughs) independent contractor it's one of those things where you're like okay this person looked really good on paper or when we talk but when it comes down to executing can they follow my project management and yeah in my head, I'm listening to this and I'm still like, this has to be kind of a project management nightmare uh, just because I, that's not my, um, my best suit, I'd say, uh, as far as just being able to send people out there. I guess you have a system for that, right? Yeah. And so, Zach, what I was going to ask you is, um, is how, you have 30 photographers going around to, um, to different places and, and taking these photos how do you get everyone on the same page? How do you get everyone to to say, "Hey, look, here's the here's the type of shot we're looking for. Here is um, you know what what we need. Here's the um, the subject that we need of the of the photo or photos." And then I'm sure you pick you know which one you think would go best. How does something like that get put into put into motion and get organized? Yeah, so um, that's you know a, a major question that I get all the time is you know when you're doing things, especially for projects where you're using multiple different content creators on the same project. Um, you know, not, not only how do you get everyone on the same page and how do you ensure you know everybody does what you want, but how do you ensure there's some sort of consistency and that it doesn't feel like a Frankenstein piece that was done by 20 different people? Um, and so mm-hmm. there's a number of things. You know, the, the first part is in, in the upfront. So every single content creator in our network has been thoroughly vetted to where you know I've had multiple conversations with them. I have seen tons of their work where I know that they're experienced enough. I, I, I know they're going to show up on time. I know they're going to be where, where you know, I tell them to be. But then also, um, you know, we're having all of the photographers, all of the filmmakers shoot on the same exact equipment. So for 
that gotcha. particular project. They were all shooting on Canon Mark Threes um, or and Canon, so- Canon Five Ds. Is then, that something that's fairly common for the for these photographers to just have, uh, you know, to have around, or is it something that they could rent and kind of you guys would cover the cost? Yes. Yeah, so uh, for the photographers that had them, they used theirs, and and uh, we rented them for all, any of the photographers that didn't have that type of camera. Gotcha. Uh, but then, you know, in addition to using the same camera, they're all shooting towards the same shot list. So we're giving them a very clear shot list of exactly what we need them to get, and they're all shooting towards the same thing. And then, um, you know, for video. Um, the, the, the other part is, you know, we, we, ha- we love to handle all of the editing and post here in Brooklyn. So even if we're sending, you know, 10 different filmmakers out to get footage in 10 different cities, we can then, you know, as long as they all shoot it the same way, all flat, low contrast, low saturation, when we get it back, we can color grade the footage so that it all looks consistent. So mm-hmm. even though it was all shot by different people, you can still give it a consistent look and a consistent feel. But yeah, totally hear you, Law. Like th- with this business, um, you know, at times it, it can definitely be um, a nightmare with you know coordinating so many different people, so many different details. Um, but you know, that's just uh, you know that's what we've well, that's uh, that's being the boss. Really good at yeah. I mean, <laughs> like that's eventually I was like, and I, I shouldn't have said it's my strong suit because now um, it's kind of like something I've been really thoughtful about and kind of really trying to focus on getting better at and giving client expectations too. So you, I don't know if you do the math in your head. So like I'll, I'll talk to a client and I'll go, okay, you need some new branding and you need an online marketing strategy. Um, and we've already cleared that out. So we'll get you these deliverables and, you know, let's get the branding and website up and we'll get that going and, uh, you know, give us about a month for that. And then, uh, you know, and really in my head, I'm like, all right, I'm going to tell, I got to, I got to tell my independent contractors, that's a two week deadline because I know it's just going to, it's going to creep. And sometimes it's me. Sometimes it's me not following up every day. I don't want to be a micromanaging kind of project manager at the same time. They're kind of like feral cats a little bit. Everybody's kind of, if they're, they're the, a lot of reason a lot of people are freelancers is because they don't have a lot of discipline or a lot of discipline to take notes in a, a regular job. I don't know if you feel that on your end. I, I think I get that, but I'm only using local Floridians. So um, <laughs> so it might be different. It, it, I, I, have you seen different worth, work ethics, like kind of depending on what country you're, you're, uh, you're getting these independent contractors from? Um, you know, I, I, I haven't seen any... Uh, you know, country specific trends, but, um, you know, definitely, you know, for, you know, video projects, for instance, if we need to send out filmmakers in, you know, three different cities to go capture footage, you know, I, I already know that, you know, the, the filmmaker, that's a creative person and, you know, they're, they may not be, uh, they may not have have the skill set that you know a producer has in handling all those details, and so that's why we always try to send out a, pro- a local producer with the filmmaker, so that they can be the ones handling the details, and the filmmaker can focus on you know the creative work. And so in that situation, you know I- I'll be you know I'll be relaying all of the information to the producers who have also you know, been vetted and then I all know that they can then manage the you know filmmakers photographers creative types that that may not have that skill set but um, you know I've I've worked with many many different filmmakers that are on the ball and on their game and so it, it's really uh, it, it's hit or miss you know everyone's a little bit different but um, and and when you're in a business like this where you're working with so many different people, um, I, I really think a big part of it is just client expectations. You just got to manage expectations with your client. You got to make sure that, you know, they, they are fully aware. So if, if, you know, you, you, if you foresee some sort of issue that could push a deadline a few days, um, you know, always just be upfront, transparent as soon as you possibly find out about it. Um, you know, go through it with your client and let them know. And, and if you're just setting their expectations the whole time, 
I, I feel like the, the times you get in a lot of trouble with clients is when you don't let them know that shit's about to hit the fan and then shit hits the fan. But I think, you know, if you kind of set their expectations a little earlier on, that shit might hit the fan. Then when it does, they're much cooler about it. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's um, the that's the biggest thing of having just human capital. It's it. It's just like I, I now I, that I look at everything from uh, a business owner perspective, anything I buy personal or business, I the f- second question I ask, just like I tell anybody that does a deck, you know, they have an app idea and they want to uh, they want to pitch it. I go, yeah, my business teacher told me the second slides your exit, you know, and I always think about that with uh, I think about that if I buy a washer and dryer, I'm like, all right what's the warranty <laughs> you know yeah. like what i never i was never that guy growing up and now i think with employees i always or independent contractors i should say legally by my uh, attorney Stephen fantetti fantetti legal your <laughs> business refined yeah i'll give him a plug um it, he uh but like with with the human capital you have with your business which i know is a kind of a douchey term but um it's one of those things where it's just gonna fuck up Something's going to fuck up. You're not, you're never going to be a hundred percent. Now, uh, can you, and I, I think you're about to touch on that. Can you see problems three steps ahead? So where you're like, all right, we got to get some photos in Ghana, but I don't know. Are we might send three, three photographers or three different producers in three different areas of Ghana because I want coverage and it's worth you know, maybe the margin will be a little bit less on this project, but we're going to deliver on time. Is that something you're kind of thinking through now? Or is that, um, I guess you, uh, how are you able to see stuff now, uh, ahead of time than when you did when you started? Um, you know, I, I I think it, it just comes with experience and, and doing projects. You know, the, the first project that I did, um, you know, I definitely wasn't on the ball as much as I am now, and and I think it's it's the same thing with anything. You know, uh, the more experience you get, the more you you learn how to kind of see around those corners a little earlier. Um, you know, and and also, you know, I'm getting now to a point where I'm I'm focusing more on kind of new business and and going out and getting the projects and. Um, you know, I've got a really, really good team of producers, especially here in Brooklyn, um, that are just, you know, they're really talented. These are, these are most of, most of them worked at big ad agencies before. And, you know, I really do, um, I think that working at a big ad agency is an incredible experience for anyone, you know, looking to have a good career, you know, really in anything. Um, you know, the hours are long, it's, it's high stress. Um, but you know, you really do learn how to manage clients and, and how to kind of problem solve. And so, you know, I, I think that hiring people that have worked at those big agencies and now, you know, getting them in a little bit more of a, a startup, smaller environment, um, you know, it definitely, it, it, it has helped us a lot. And I, I think that, um, you know, I, I owe all of our success to, to my team for sure and to to that point um take us back a little bit and we'll 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 start to backtrack here but um i mean kind of take us back to you know you're working at a big ad agency and you start to see this void i know before you had mentioned um you know just the (coughs) ridiculous amounts of money you were you were finding that people are spending um with some of these budgets that they have and how it's just completely not necessary to, to to need these huge budgets to get these projects done. So yeah. you know, kind of take us back to to targeting that void, and then just the excitement and kind of or lack thereof. I don't know if it was exciting or not. I'm just kind of assuming here. For most people, it is. Um, but you know, understanding, man, I can I can really make a move here. I've 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 acquired enough skills. I you know I've got a good enough head on my shoulders to uh, to try to at least attempt to become a player uh, in the game here. And that's a beer cracking in the background. If you're wondering, <laughs> yeah, it's you know it's it's been a it's been a long Saturday already. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, so, um, yeah. yeah. So, I think the the first kind of huge aha moment for me was um, when I was producing a 
a uh, TV spot for Marriott. It was the Marriott was the first brand that I worked on, and nice. I remember um, after everything was said and done, going back and looking through the the scope of work at the that the budget and seeing that just for this one TV spot, there was like. It was like sixty-five or seventy thousand dollars worth of travel, just in hotel airfare wow. for just for like the crew and the team from the agency and all that. And and, and that's really, that some some random dude in in the travel department got like put all got all those points for that too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> and like uh, and, and it's just a, a ton of other things. You know, right now brands. Um, they're they're starting to smarten up a little bit to to the costs that these things really really um, to what things really cost. You know, ten years ago, spending a million dollars on a TV spot was the norm. That was like that wasn't even considered a, that big of a budget. Um, but you know, now things are are really changing just because I think a lot of brands are starting to work with um, more nimble, more creative, up-and-coming shops that can put a lot more focus on onto the brand versus, you know, some of these big agencies that, you know, have, you know, 40, 50 big clients. And, um, you know, so just I'm backtracking a little, but for, uh, for me, when I really kind of saw those travel costs for the Marriott shoot, um, I, that was kind of the first aha where I was like, well, why didn't we just use a local crew in the city that we were sh- shooting instead of you know, sending a crew here from New York and having to pay their hotel, having to pay all of these fees. And so yeah. um, that was kind of one of the first things. And then I've just myself, I've, I've always kind of been entrepreneurial. I've always wanted to start a business. I, I had another business back in college where we we sold um, ski boot shin pads. It's called Shinnies. Um, nice. <laughs> I, uh, I I have always wanted to do it. And so as soon as I kind of saw an opportunity, um, I I just kind of jumped at it. Yeah, I mean and, this it, this is a is an amazing idea. I mean you're. You're essentially an air traffic controller. Is a lot, a lot of what you're doing. I'm sure now you have it delegated out a little bit, but you know when you're starting this out, uh, a lot of that is just like, okay, okay, I, I know the idea. I get it. I can, I can, I can save this cost that on the on their bottom line of their budget. And once you get that, and then it's like, okay, now I got to deliver. <laughs> and yeah. did anything with that first big thing that uh that took where you're like uh where you, you're just super anxious about it and now you're kind of you might not be well, well i mean it, it 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 really is um i i believe with anything but starting a business like this um it really is all about faking it till you make it like in the in the early days where you know we didn't have any you know big brand work on our portfolio and i'm i'm trying to get these meetings with these big brands, um, you know, it, it just was, you know, a matter of getting them to like you, getting them to like your ideas. You know, for a while there in the beginning, we were basically cold calling brands and sending them emails, and we were coming up with two or three really awesome video ideas before we even got a call with them. And so we would basically email them, call them, and say, "Hey, we have three amazing videos." ideas for you guys can you give us 10 minutes and so you know normally you don't spend the time thinking of the ideas until you're getting paid but right. in, in the beginning you got to make some got to make some sacrifices and so for us you know we were able to get some of those early phone calls by putting in the upfront work and coming up with some really awesome ideas um, that would then you know show them you know we have creative thinking we're we're hungry and um, you know there you you'd be surprised there's people out there like all of these decision makers at every company every big brand the person that is deciding what company they're going to go with to make this video is just a person like you and me and it's just a right. matter of getting them to to like you it's it's really it's all about relationships and um you know as as we've continued to uh, to get more and more work it, it it's just a, a matter of um getting your current clients to to think what you did for them is awesome like 
basically the business that I'm in, I'm in the business of making my clients look good. You know, we, we oh, never course, get the yeah. credit. You know, we, it, it's not about getting the credit. So if we make this amazing video for our client, we want them to get all the PR. We want them to, you know, have huge success from this video. And, and if we never get mentioned, so what? Because as long as, you know, the brand is getting some awesome PR and getting some awesome results, then they're going to keep coming back to us every time. And so that's really what it's all about. And I'm sure you guys, you know, are the same way with Choco Works. You know, I'm, I'm, yeah. that, that, that's how it is. We're, we're in the business of just uh, making our clients look like geniuses. Yeah. And you guys, you guys mainly want to impress the, the people who make the decisions. You know, it's if they get the good feedback, that being they being the company who you're who you're contracting with and working for, that's that's going to be great. And you you know you want them to talk to their friends. If if Coke is talking to their friends over at, um, you know, I don't, at Lay's or something, just because I got chips on my or mind even, right now. Even the Coke brothers. Yeah. You know? Okay. The Coke they're, brothers. They're big money. So you know you, you you want people to talk and you want people to take notice. So it, it's almost one of those things like, you know the law always says good work begets good work and uh it's i I think that's so true in 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 your case and you almost know how well you're doing by you know what you what your inbox looks like when you when you wake up in the morning or if your phone's ringing or not right yeah yeah for sure i mean there's definitely um you know in this industry, there's uh, busier times of the year and slower times of the year, and, and it ebbs and flows. But um, you know, I've I've been lucky in that we've been we've been busy for a while now. But you know, everything you know, every project, every client that you make, every project that you do, you're you're on this path. And like you know, so right now we're doing a bunch of work for Intel. You know, I didn't just you know one day get access to the Intel clients and we first did a really small client we did a small project for an ad agency that was doing some work for Intel um, a small you know maybe two three thousand dollar project and then we did that really well and then that agency ended up bringing us on for a project that we you know collaborated on for Intel and that was when I got to meet the Intel clients and kind of get some time with them and you know it started that relationship there and then was able to then you know g- try and and get some work directly for Intel and so it's it's really you you never start um on the path like you know where you want to end up you just kind of um work your way through it and and you, it's it, a lot of luck too, you know. It, it it's really just. Oh uh, no, no! Don't say luck, man. That, look, it's hard work, and it, it it feels like luck because it comes out of nowhere. But I I can tell the, the, uh, you've got you've got the grit and you've got uh you got hustle. I don't believe in luck. I don't. It's a nice <laughs> thing to say. It sounds humble, but I know most entrepreneurs don't really want to believe that, and I definitely don't. It's <laughs> And I don't want to. I don't want to believe on luck. I don't want to believe on hope or luck. That's just me. I'm. I, and then I know I'm kind of getting aggressive about it, but I'm saying like, love doesn't exist either. Love ex- <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Love exists for sure. I love Bo Jackson. I should have said my wife, but yeah, <laughs> I love Bo Jackson. I have a man crush for him. That's fine. But I'm saying like luck in business. Uh, sure, you're catching. Sure, you're lucky to be born, and you're lucky to have been born at a time where you sought this opportunity in an age where the internet becomes very easy to engage with people now on your phone. In most places you can talk to someone via Slack. I'm sure you got your Slack and Asana game going uh, hard uh, with your, your guys all over the world. And I just feel like, yeah, it sure. There's an element of luck, but look, man, that's this podcast. If it's anything is about, hustle over everything else and um so i can't let that slide (laughs) (laughs) i'm not gonna let you get away with that um hey and i'm i'm kind of interested to where uh, i'm not kind of interested i'm very interested but where did it change for you where did it go from we're gonna fake it till we make it and maybe we'll uh like you said we're gonna have some um you know, we're going to have three ideas kind of storyboarded and ready for when we, when we email Coke or for when we email, um, you know, Samsung or whoever, um, or, or try to get a call with them to people calling you. I feel like that's the big 
identifier as a turning point in a company. I know for myself with scouting block, you know, I was putting myself out there over and over, just showing up to, to baseball tournaments and just starting, I would just go and I'd start filming and I'd have parents come up to me and be like, who are you filming? And I'd just be like, well, who's your son? And we'd start talking and, and I'd end up with a video. <laughs> come check out in my so, van. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll show you behind that curtain <laughs> over there. Um, but, and then, you know, once you, once you do it enough, people, your phone starts ringing, your inbox starts, starts going off. And when did it kind of change for you guys? Was there a big project that you guys did? Was there a, was there a certain project you were working on where, you know, maybe the word started to spread a little bit or, um, you know, um, how did that come about? Yeah. So, you know, for, for us, um, you know, the, the first year of the business was me focused on building the network. And then, um, once we, we started really kind of hustling and going out and trying to get the work, um, you know, we, we really did start really small with, with, some really, really small projects. We did a, a few projects for free even um, just to get the relationships that we needed to kind of get to the next step. And, um, you know, for us, I think our first big project was that TIAA one the, uh, where we, you know, sent out photographers in 30 different cities. And, and for that, you know, that was, that made it easy for us to then email a bunch of other brands and say, Hey, look what we did for them. We can do it for you guys too. Um, right. and you know, we're still, you know, we're, we're not at a place where, you know, Coca-Cola and, uh, you know, Southwest are, are blowing up my inbox. Um, you know, we're still having to hustle every day to get right. projects. Um, but you know, it, it's definitely gotten a lot easier now that we have some really cool work to, to send along in those emails and some really cool work to talk about in these pitch meetings. So for yeah, us, it um, seems like you're at that point now where you can, um, you're, uh, I mean, may, maybe Coke's not, you know, texting you the, the, the marketing and, and ad director at Coke, maybe he's not shooting you text messages, but you're at the point now where you can breathe a little bit. And, uh, and it seems like, I mean, it seems like you guys are rolling. We've been, you know, checking out your stuff on breakcontent.com on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You guys are, you guys, you know, have it all covered. Um, and it seems like you guys, a, I mean, you don't need us to tell you this. You do a really good job with your work, but B, you guys have work to do. And that's the most noticeable part. Um, so it seems like, you know, you, you guys are definitely in the fight. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it, it's been great. And I, I, uh, yeah, I I have my team to thank for it for sure. I mean, my my sales guys are are really hungry, and they really are a, a team of awesome hustlers out in Denver. Literally every day, cold calling probably a hundred new companies uh, wow. every single day, and um, it, it really is a numbers game. You know, for every hundred people we reach out to, we'll get maybe one or two phone calls, and mm -hmm. it's just a matter of when you get that one phone call doing it right. And I think we've gotten now to a, a place where we have a pretty good system. Um, we have good work to show and, um, you know, it, it's, it's going well. So I, I definitely am, uh, loving life right now. Have That's you, great. Now, I, I should have done my research a little bit. Have y'all made your own content to express your company and try to, you know, I'm a big Facebook advertiser kind of guy because I love how targeted it is um, and LinkedIn's not quite there yet, but I, I see the business to business value of both. Um, I guess my thing, I, I always tell people like if they come to our office, it kind of looks a little jumbled because you know, it's one of those things where I, and, and our website is not where I want it to be. And our branding is not where I want it to be necessarily, but I always say it's like clients first and we'll get to it, but eventually I got to make time for that. And that's the next six weeks. I'm really trying to work on that. Uh, for y'all, I don't know if y'all have tried to be tried. I hear, I guess I hear a, a sales room, a sales or call room. And I'm just like, I wonder if they could reach guys, you know, by showing them <laughs> what they're about. But I guess it's a hard thing to explain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, we, we, um, we definitely have, started pushing out our own content you know a lot of times if you're if you're calling companies and trying to convince them to let us create their content they're going to want to see that we did it 
for ourselves first. Um, so, you know, we've done some, some pretty cool stuff. Um, you know, we, we have, uh, an Instagram feed called millennials of the world where, where we send out our photographers in different countries around the world and do, um, features on interesting millennials. Uh, and so that's, a, that's a pretty cool thing to check is, out. Is and that then, similar to like a humans of New York type yeah, deal, but more around similar. the world? Hmm. Very similar. It's, it's just, a great concept. just more global and it's all kind of millennials and, and, um, you know, millennial focused stuff and then uh mm -hmm. right now we're also in the process of making a video it's called through our eyes and we're uh, my goal is to use footage from a hundred different countries in the video and so uh right now we've got filmmakers going out we've got we send them shot lists and we're we're trying to put together a a story that that kind of flows from beginning to end but uses footage from a hundred different countries so that that'll probably be ready in another month um, nice. but yeah Do do you Definitely ever send someone up. with a shot list that you know they're just going to be like you just they get like kind of the, the shaft and you're just like hey we you know we need you to go find a lion in the wild we need you to go and get real close yeah like we <laughs> we we need something just kind of like obscure where I'm sure some of those things come up and you're like well you know remember that dentist that shot that lion <laughs> yeah could you get some footage it's something like, like that R Ramik's <laughs> gonna really hate this but we need that shot like have you guys ever had something that you kind of send out on a, on a call and uh you, you don't think it's gonna go well um you know we, we've definitely had some some very interesting projects where um i'm i'm not fully confident how it's gonna turn out until it it it's over. Um, you know, right now we're, we're in the process of starting to figure out this project where, um, one of our clients, they, they want to create a video where we take hamsters and dress them up like people and have the hamsters <laughs> like basically doing like real people things. Laundry. Uh, yeah, exactly. Man, and Kia is really on making, those hamsters. Making hot pockets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And for me, I'm like, you know, there's so many things I can control. I can control the lighting. I can control how it looks. But like being able to control a hamster and what he does, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm not so confident about. But so, you know, <laughs> that that that's you know, a special case for sure. But um, you know, just yeah. point to uh, Evan Almighty and just go, hey, you know why that one was so expensive? Yeah, that movie is because they have a fucking shitload of animals. It was one of the most expensive <laughs> movies. Yeah. to make because they. Everything got delayed because animals are. It's a little unpredictable. A crazy, yeah, they're volatile. It's a, a, a hard variable to knock down. Uh, I get. We'll, we'll wrap this up, and I guess the question I'd I, I'd try to wrap it up with, unless you have something, Caleb. But I was gonna say, you know, um, it, it's kind of a two-parter. Uh, you have filmmakers, photographers, directors, producers. Uh, you have graphic designers. You have animators, illustrators, uh, writers editors all that um you know who's who's someone good for if they're listening and maybe they want to get involved and kind of do some freelance work to prove it to you i guess go to your site but what would you look for and then the other side of that is what's a, like what's your minimum client because i could see myself using y'all's service uh as subcontracted if something in the medium to large business came my way where it's like oh shit you know, like I, I got to because I'm, I'm trying I'm scaling up as as much as y'all are. And I'm not at that level where y'all are at. But I'm saying, you know, I try to again, try to see these things ahead of time. And so I go, OK, if I have a large brand in this area that wants to work with us, but I need content that y'all provide. You know what? What is that good client? If that makes sense. So, yeah, let me let me try to answer that so um <laughs> <laughs> so the the first part of your question and um you know how does somebody go about reaching out or, or getting involved with us um you know we we now every friday we will as a team kind of review any of the content creators that have either applied through our website or you know a lot of times some of the filmmakers that we work with will send their friends our way that are also filmmakers. And so, you know, we've got, um, you know, e each week we've got multiple people hitting us up. And so we'll watch their work. We're looking for people that have a unique style. You know, we really, we don't want everybody in the network to be the same. So we want to have some documentary filmmakers, some humor, comedy filmmakers, some, 
you know, big brand commercial filmmakers. And so we, we definitely are looking for people that have something unique about them. Uh, but then also it's, you know, people that when I jump on the phone with them or jump on Skype with them, you know, they are smart. I, I know that, you know, they know what they're doing. If I throw some kind of uh, some zing at them asking them about you know some sort of technical stuff they're they're on the ball and they know what they're doing um and and just they seem like somebody that i would want to work with because at the end of the day um you know uh, these every single one of these filmmakers in our network if i'm putting them on a project they're you know they're representing break content and um, you know, so we take that very seriously, but definitely, um, anybody that wants to join the network or get a, get a chance to do some cool projects with some big brands, um, they can apply right through our website or just send an email to really anyone on our team. Um, then the, uh, the second part of your question, um, I, you know, I mean, it doesn't I, have to be like, I don't want you to kind of. I'm not saying like honestly, I don't even like remember uh, the, the, just kind of what's a good client. Um, if you were getting referrals, uh, what would be a good client for y'all? Because it, okay, it seems yeah, like yeah. You, y'all, y'all sound like you work with very large brands, but you may have that small local sector as well. I don't know. Um, so I'm trying to trying to see. I I'm genuinely asking because for my own selfish reasons, but. Uh, it, the first part of that question was, hey, I might have guys for you that I'm going to tell to apply. But the second half is uh, just as selfish as <laughs> just saying, hey, <laughs> what what is a, a good referral your way or what's a good bid uh, to throw your way? Yeah. So, um, you know, really it's. Uh... Oh, no. Did Skype go out? Did it not work? Hey Zach, there you are. There you are. Yeah. You hear me? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so yeah, we we definitely love working with the big global brands, but um, you know, there's tons of startups, there's tons of small businesses that need content as well. And so you know, while we do love getting the big budget projects, um, you know, we still take on smaller budget things all the time. You know, we we're still doing stuff for law firms. We're still doing stuff for some nonprofits. You know, that's a big thing um, that we do each year. It's called content with a cause. And basically, at the end of each year, we select a nonprofit that we think has done some really cool things that year, and we create a video for them completely free of charge. Uh, and so each year we do that at the end of the year. So we're doing stuff with nonprofits, and um, you know, I'm really I'm I'm trying to. For, for as long as possible, at least, um, I'm trying to to be a company that you know services everyone and and can kind of help not only the big global brands get stuff done and, and create cool content, but also you know smaller local brands as well. Um, you know, any budget is a budget, um, and we're not at a place right now where we're turning stuff away. So. Uh, um, any company that needs in compelling, interesting content, whether that's video, photography, writing, um, we would definitely be interested in working with them. Cool. That's great, man. Hey, hey Zach, um, we want to thank you for coming on and, and making time. Um, like we'd said earlier, as we were cracking our, our beers, it is a Saturday. And uh, I know a lot of times when, you, when you've got your own business and you've got your own things going on, um, the, the weekdays don't always um, contain your, your work hours. And uh, we want to thank you for, for making time to come on Sweat Equity and uh, kind of let us into your world a little bit. Um, do you mind telling everybody where they can find you guys uh, you know, on the web, on social media, and all those sort of things? So if they're interested, they can check you guys out? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, first of all, you know, thank you guys again for, for having me on. I've been listening to your podcast for a while, and I, I love what you guys are doing. I'm, I'm super interested in any sort of business, startup, entrepreneurial-focused podcast. So um, this is my first podcast i'm excited to, oh. to be a part of it well, well we're, we're um, glad to have you on your first man yeah taking my cherry and then <laughs> um um where people can find us just go to breakcontent.com it's b-r-e-a-k content.com and if you go to our contact page it'll have all of our 
all of our social media links. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Google+, Vimeo, YouTube, pretty much everything. So uh, definitely check out some of our work and um, you know, reach out if, if anybody knows of anybody that needs some videos. Oh, I, I definitely know. <laughs> and I've got, I've got a shitload of comedians that are actually talented film uh, filmmakers. And, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. I, I'm excited to be able to throw some stuff your way. Law so. and I um, have been behind the mic here the whole time, kind of uh, giving each other that one look, like that head nod, every time we, can, uh, we think of someone who, it, it, you know, might fit the bill for you guys. And we've just, we've been <laughs> giving that look the, the entire episode. So, my neck. Uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, but hey, man, thank you so much for coming on again. And, um, you know, anybody listening that's interested, go check these guys out, breakcontent.com. From there, you can find all their social media um, plugs um, and, and all that good stuff. And we are looking forward to seeing what you guys are doing in the future. And uh, like we said, man, we're, we're big fans of, of yours and everything at Break Content. And um, we're just glad you came on. Thanks for giving us the time. Yeah, no problem, guys. All right, man. Later. Enjoy Brooklyn. All right. See ya. See ya.